podcast. All right, we are we are rolling. Um, we're talking obviously to the Mustang community. So here we go in three sure. seconds. All right, Ford Mustang community. So sometimes quirky, often funny, but most assuredly wise. Jeff Ford has been producing and hosting his YouTube channel for years and hundreds of how many how the hell how many podcast how many how many YouTube videos do you have? I, I couldn't even count that high. How many do you have? Do you know? Five hundred and seventy. Are you are auto rest of my account is at five hundred and seventy one right now? That is crazy. And how many years have you been doing it? I've been doing it since 2010, so right now I'm 12 years. All right. So before YouTube, this was like the YouTube uh, sensation from the very beginning. I mean, you, this was before YouTube was even like YouTube. Well, I mean, we were probably within the first five years of YouTube starting. We started doing what we did uh, purely because I was looking at YouTube videos on how to do things and finding them abysmal at doing it. Um, very swimmy camera work, hard to see stuff that they were doing, not knowing how to talk about it. And since I come from a background of how to magazines like Mustang Monthly and Mustang and Ford, uh, I took that knowledge base from those magazines and put it into uh, a video format, basically. All right, let me let me continue with the intro so we can officially introduce you to this thing, though. So his offbeat raw footage leaves no doubt that what you see is what you get, and that's a good thing. So he's formerly, as he just mentioned, the editor of Mustang Monthly for a handful of years until 2002, and he knows his stuff. Jeff, I want to get into some trouble today. Can we do that? Because I, I don't want to open up an engine, but I need to open up your head a little bit. Welcome to Ford Mustang. The that early will be a project. problem for some people, <laughs> trust me. I, you know, I, when I connected with you, you know, genuine about this, I mean, I was fangirling a little bit because I've watched so many of your videos. And, you know, I think about my friends that are in the Mustang community. And, and you know, I, the joke was until recently, my, my biggest, you know, level of doing any kind of mechanics on the car was me taking out the bucket to wash it. And I got this Ford F-250 uh, pickup truck, 1967. I see that you actually oh. have, you have one also. You have an old Ford truck too. Yep. And I started taking apart this stuff because I realized it wasn't quite as essential to me as my Mustang. So I'm like, I'm tinkering with the truck and learning stuff. And I'm like, looking at you making these repairs and all the stuff that you do. And I'm just, were you a mechanic in a former day? Like, tell me a little of your story. What do you do? And how did you get to know what you know? Oh, man. I mean, it's, it's a long and brutal path, basically. We I got started as a little kid. I love cars. Ever since I was a little kid, I've, I've enjoyed automobiles. And with my last name, you pretty much have to be a Ford guy, even though there is a Ford family in Detroit that used to have a Chevrolet dealer. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, I've always liked cars. And my mom always used to kid that if you cut my head open, you know, little cars would fall out because that's all I talked about. I could always take any conversation that I had and turn it back to a conversation about cars. So from the time I was little, I got into it, and uh, my, my dad, oddly enough, was not into the car thing that much, but my uncle was, and so he kind of kept the fire going and taught me a few things. A lot of it, I just learned from reading, because I'm a voracious reader, yeah. so I would buy books about Mustangs and books about Ford. Uh, I bought books about how to tune Holly carburetors. I read Hot Rod back then. Uh, it was the, the magazine to read for that sort of thing. And then I discovered Mustang Monthly and started reading that magazine back in the early 80s. Um, and it just kind of went from there. And so I just kept reading and reading and reading and doing things, making mistakes, still do. Um, you know, I, I've just, one of my friends told me the other day, he says, you're now a guru. And I'm like, my God, that's really bad for the rest of the world. Well, you know, you, you figure what is it, 10,000 hours to become an expert. And certainly by by uh, by the design of how many videos that you've put together, you've probably put that many hours into the video footage that you have put together oh, yeah. over the decade. A lot, a lot of time. Absolutely a lot of time. To that. But, you know, it's just for me, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough, I won't say lucky, fortunate enough to make my hobby my vocation. Right. Um, my hobby is the car. So I have a hard time separating what I like to mess with and what I do for a living. So we use the video now because magazines are kind of dead. Yep. Um, yep. You know, I don't mean that in a bad way. Magazines are out there that are really vital and current, but on the whole, most people, if you ask anybody right now, Hey, I've got a problem with my washing machine. 
Yeah. Well, let's say, go out on YouTube, YouTube and check it out. Somebody's got a video out there about that washing machine. Uh, yeah, when I would when I would Google, like I um, I was recently trying to deal with a power steering pump problem, and uh, geez, I mean, I ordered some stuff through Rock Auto, and I had an issue with one of the parts that came, and I thought the part was problematic, and probably the problematic thing was me <laughs> putting it in the putting it back in the in the truck. But I was watching some of these videos that you've put together. I mean, you've done like door alignment on your on your pickup truck, and I and I love that because I'm dealing with I just replaced all the weather stripping in the in the truck, and I can't close the freaking doors. The biggest problem right now with weather stripping is the Deuteronomy of the, of the rubbers that they put in. Um, NPD has a weather strip series that they've done for the passenger cars that is perfect. I did a video on, <laughs> and that sounds really weird for me, but I did a video on that. There's a video out there for the Mustang guys that NPD has a, a set of the rubber for the car that is actually perfect. You can put it on a, you got a car that's got a deck lid that doesn't fit right you can take their trunk lid weather strip put it on it and it will fit and we proved that in an episode um it's really about what they use to make the the weather strip with and i've been talking to the guys at mpd a little bit about trying to get that same level of rubber in the truck stuff because i mean i have the same problem with mine so it's not just you. On this case, it's not you. All right. Well, you know, I was watching. I was watching, thinking maybe I was doing something wrong and applying it, you know, and putting it together. Maybe it was the wrong glue. Maybe I used something. Maybe I put it in wrong. I wasn't sure. And then I was watching you, and you actually did did an entire door alignment because of the weather stripping. And I'm like, I don't know which which bolts to unscrew to determine what what adjustments to make. It's anyway. The whole the whole thing is is a mess right now, and it's like every repair that I have tried to make, I've had to make three times. And it's like, at what point do you say, you know what, I'm not going to DIY it anymore, but I refuse to yield to the fact that I can't do it. I know I can. I'm a smart guy. You can do anything you want on this planet. I've, I've told people before with our videos, we had a guy right into us years ago um, who had said, I thought I wanted to do my own convertible top until I saw your video. <laughs> at first, I was a little insulted. <laughs> But further down in his letter, he says, thank you, because I would have bought the top, screwed that one up, and then taken it to the guy and had them do it. Right. He said, so you saved me the money of buying the top and screwing it up myself. I just went ahead and took it to the guy. But that's kind of one of the things that I try to do with this. You know, you may look at a repair and go, man, there's no way I'm doing that. But we try to give you the ammunition to be able to do it if you decide, you know what, I think I want to try this. I tell people this all the time. The difference between us and anybody else that can do this is some people just, they go out there, they go, no, I'm not even going to look at it. I'm not going to do it. And that car sits in their garage for 20, right. 30 years. Right. And then the kids say, hey, dad's passed on now. We're going to unload that car for $40 and go to a nice restaurant tonight. Right, right. Well, I look at, I watch your videos, and one of the things that I really love about the videos, and I apologize, I don't know the name of all of your your co-hosts. I just I just learned you, of your videos just recently. So for me, it's like I was fangirling because I've been like obsessing on watching all of your videos, especially with the problems that I've been having with my my truck. They're sure. not even related to my Mustang. And I watch your videos, and the thing I love about it is that you're you're okay making the mistakes in the video it's like a trial and error and that's kind of what i go through as an owner and a, and as a, somebody that's making the repairs myself i'm going no that doesn't work and you you kind of poke fun at yourself and your co-hosts on the on the on the videos too which is so much better than watching a video that just says you go from point a to point c and here's the here's b in between there and they get it right every time because it never goes that well the first time for anybody doing this I want the mistakes because I want people to understand that mistakes are part of life. That's something that I've always really preached to folks is the difference between a craftsman and an amateur is the craftsman knows how to hide his mistakes. Mm -hmm. He's going to make them because you're a human being and you're not going to make anything perfect the first time you do it, or maybe even the fifth time you do it, depending on what you're working on. But you have that ability to go back in and say, okay, this didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start over and I'm going to do it again and try it a different way. I have a friend of mine that years ago in the Mustang hobby, he painted his car five times. <laughs> I believe it. Till he got one version that he really liked. But each time he learned a little bit of something about how to paint a car. 
And I admire that in a person when they have that perseverance to stick to something like putting a car together. People, people don't give enough credit to that trade, you know, to, to folks oh who do gosh. what we do, or even just a guy who can go out there and change his own plugs. Today, that's a very rare thing is to have somebody who knows how to go out and change the plugs in their car. Or a lot of times, I hate to say this, even change a tire on their car. Well, not to mention the the boost in confidence that somebody gets when they do a repair and they do it well, or they mess it up and they do it, and then they turn around and do it. I replaced the heater box in my uh, 65 Mustang convertible, which is pictured Ooh. behind me. And um, it was a bear of a repair. But fortunately, I had a, a, a really good support mechanism. A friend of mine, Brad, who is also in the community, he he walked me through a number. And Guido, the same thing, Glacido. He uh, he walked me through a number of the things that I don't think that I would have known or done myself, and didn't see it in any manual. You know, talk for a second about the community because you've built a community of you know a hundred thousand people that are subscribing now, roughly to your to your YouTube channel. That's got to feel good, and at the same time, it's got to feel like man, this is, I mean, I, you have the community within the community. How cool is that? And how does that feel? Well, it's really neat. I mean, we have, we actually try to have our guys come in and help sometimes. The one of the latest videos we did over on Manic Mechanic, which is one of our other shows, um, we have a galaxy that we're working on on that one. And we asked the community, okay, what do you want to see? How far do you want me to take this? Do you want me to go soup to nuts? Or do you want me to just blow through this? get it over with and move on to the next thing. And by and large, everybody who commented on that video said, yes, soup to nuts. We want to know every little jot and tittle of what you do on this. And I am continually and objectively floored by the fact that people are willing to sit and watch me work like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like well, having a, it's like having a, a, a hundred thousand foremans watching one guy work. Well, I got to tell you though, when that repair comes up on your bucket list of things that you need to take care of or your honeydew list of the things that you need to take care of on your car, you thank God that that video was around. I mean, even some simple, simple, simple things like replacing the um, the washer pump, the windshield washer pump in the, uh, in the 67 uh, F250. I, yeah, it wasn't a big challenge, but the but the idea of being able to rely upon a video to go back to, to say, hey, this is what has to be done. That's why I love the visual channel so much. And it is, it is very cool. What was the brainchild behind you creating the channel to begin with? Um, well, I, we, again, mostly it was just me, uh, my friend at the time, Vince. We were watching a video on how to replace a hitch on, I think, a, a 2005 F-250. We're going to put a hitch on the vehicle. And it was the video, the only video that we found out there, and this was back in 2009, late 2009, was horrible. Yeah. And he and I both looked at each other, surely we can do this. And after spending thousands of dollars on camera gear, because when we first started out, we didn't. Back then, mobile phones weren't what they are now, where guys, you know, walk around and go, so guys, this is what we're doing today, that kind of deal. We, were, we went out and bought nice cameras. We bought some HF, HF 200s and we bought three cameras because I couldn't trust that any one of us was good enough to get the shot. <laughs> get three different shots. So you run through our three cameras. Uh, we still do that to this day. We, work, we do three cameras. We bought the HF 200s, worked for years and years with those. Then Vince took a job somewhere else and it was hard for him to be able to be here on Saturdays. Cam had been working with us. So Cam, my current co-host, came on board at that point. He was a high school kid. Yeah. Yeah. And he is now, he is now working for diesel laptops in Columbia, South Carolina as a full-time job comes here every Saturday that I need him and works with us. Where in the country are you? Where are you? We're in South Carolina. We're uh, in North Augusta, South Carolina, just across the border from Augusta, Georgia, where they have the master's tournament every year. How, how often on average would you say that you're, that you're making videos? And, and I understand that you act, every once in a while, you have somebody that actually comes to where you shoot video. Do you have like fans that come there and actually do we some have, stuff with you? Well, we have guys that come in. Uh, matter of fact, Stephen Hoax says he's got a channel on YouTube um, and his channel, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but he is planning on coming out in March to work with us on some stuff. We're going to do shoot stuff for both his channel and my channel. Um, and we've got like my friend, Bill Rodish, and he runs a channel called six rounds studios and six rounds, all one word. And Bill, I have his Camaro here that we're supposed to be working on. 
Mm. We aren't getting much done on it, but we are supposed to be working on the car. Um, and I these guys, come, I want to come there just to be a helper for you. I, I, cause, cause for me, it's like, what a great learning tool to work on and, and be supervised. It's like having an apprentice me mentor kind of relationship going on that would, that's awesome. I tell anybody and everybody that wants to come out, if you want to come out and, and meet with us and be on the show or not be on the show and just hang out, we're fine with any of that. Um, I really enjoy interacting with folks that watch the show. Uh, we have sometimes had people that are experts come in. I've got a good friend that works for a, a paint supply company over in Augusta, Georgia. He's been on the show a few times doing stuff with us because he's an expert at things. So I try to get experts in when I can. Um, but yeah, man, I, I love having people come out and do stuff and work with us and, and just hang out. Um, when, when did you realize that this was a thing that was going to catch on? I mean, at 100,000 subscribers now, you know, you can look, you know, look in the rearview mirror and say, shit, that worked. <laughs> but but at, the, at, the, <laughs> yeah. at, the, at the time, though, when you're like when you're doing those first handful of videos and you're not struggling, but you're like, you know, for me in the podcast, I'm 110 episodes in and we have, you know, roughly 90,000 people that follow us on Instagram. And that's totally cool. Now I can look and say, OK, but what is the next step for me? You know, I know right. that that sponsorship and monetization and all of that stuff that's good. I never got into this because of the money and maybe the money will happen somehow along the way. And maybe sponsorship happens somewhere along the way. But I know just looking back in my rearview mirror, as you do too, at some point, you had to turn around and say, this is something that's working. But when was that point for you? Oh, I guess <laughs> the point for me when I figured we had made it was National Parks Depot has been a sponsor for our show from day one. I would not have been able to do any of this stuff without those guys at MPD. Um, so they have been the impetus behind what we do. Uh, but probably the time when Rick and I sat down, because at first we were doing a purview basis. Yeah. And I, I had this feeling, I, and I called Rick up and I says, I'm going to stop us right here because I think this is a lot. <laughs> Talking about the money. And Rick said, that's really weird because I was just about to call you and do the same thing. And I was like, okay, we're good. And so that was when I knew we were actually kind of a going concern. Um, then we started bringing in other advertisers. We've got Eat Detroit Spring on board. My wife works for a company out of Australia that does suspensions. RRS USA is a U.S. mark for their business. So RRS USA is also a company who's now advertising with us. Um, we've also got, uh, just any other number of things going on, on that level. Then we picked up auto crafters who sponsors our show manic mechanic, and they're the sole sponsor on that show. So each one of those videos is done only because right. we have the financial support behind it from the guys at auto crafters. Well, um, if for, if for nothing else, I'd love to, to come there and work on vehicles so that you can teach me the, 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 the business aspect of this. Cause I never get, like I said, I I'm a podcast producer by that's my, my profession, but I got into this because I bought a, a Ford Mustang and I'm like, Hey, I may as well, you know, combine my passion for my Mustang with my profession, not even focused on the dollars and the business blew up. I mean, not the business, the, the podcast blew up and so did my Instagram channel. And I'm like, what am I, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe there's a direction that I need to go. And I know that this is, the, this isn't the format to, to chat about that, but I'm happy to just learn from you here. It's like, what, where, where do I go? Like, what do I do? I mean, if you're at 90,000, you're doing better than I did in the first five years. We didn't get to where we're at until in the last six, eight months. There are other channels that are far more successful than we are. Uh, Craig 909, I think it's Craig 909. He's a YouTuber. He's a lot on Instagram a good bit. Craig's a little more successful than we are, faster than we were. But when we started, in the, the stuff on YouTube wasn't at that level yet. Right, right, um, right. And so automotive stuff, you kind of, you're kind of, a, with what we do, especially as a niche within a niche, because you have people who are doing a lot of stream of consciousness videos where they're just sitting there talking about what they're doing, but they're not really showing you what they're doing. Oh, you need to see it. YouTube is all about show me how to do it, which is why I love what you do and how raw and genuine you guys are as you do it. It's, it's like, that's what brings me back to your channel over and over again, even though, again, a relatively new subscriber to your channel, 
it's like, that's why I continue to scour through the stuff that you do because I'm like, oh, well, Jeff will show me how to do it and he'll do it and he'll be honest about it. That's what I love about it. Well, so I much. mean, that's, that's the thing we try to do with the show is it, it's, we try to, and I'm not saying that the other, other model right. of it is bad. Right. It's just, that's not what we do, but that's what the algorithm seems to like more than what we do. Uh, strict hardcore how to, where we are injecting some humor into it, but also we're trying to inject the information you need to receive. If you see us saying something funny, none of it's scripted. That is right. Cam and I interacting. That's how we are. If you come here, you're going to go, yeah, that's exactly how they are. Sometimes it gets a little sketchy on stuff we probably wouldn't put on a TV show right. or on the YouTube show as far as our humor, because, you know, we're guys and sometimes things get a little bawdy. But I, I just, overall... Well, you're doing great. I mean, I, I love it. I, I really do. I, I love the I love the unpolished nature of the but I, but I do like the quality of the video that you're putting together, too. So it almost feels like and I know this isn't what you're doing, but it almost feels like it's scripted spontaneity. You know, you, you feel like you feel like you're putting it together. Use that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, re rehearse spontaneity. I guess that's the that's probably another way to. Scripted to, spontaneity. Way to, so, so tell me a little bit about, you know, I, I talked to um, Howard Swig from, uh, from Bring a Trailer uh, recently. He's the, he, they have some huge, like 325,000 or maybe even more, 350,000 people that follow them on Instagram, which is the channel mm -hmm. that, we, that we work on mostly for our, uh, for our podcast. And um, he had like uh, Jay Leno, you know, helped to uh, put together a, uh, an auction for one of his cars. And of course, when you put together like Jay Leno and an already popular site, you're going to just multiply 10 X the, uh, you know, the following, have oh, you yeah. put anybody famous on your, on your show or have you worked through any, any repairs that, that, you know, uh, who had Jay Leno sent me this repair to try to make. And so we're going to do it. No, 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 I don't know anybody. I'm, I'm just a dude in South Carolina. That's the way I, I mean, feel. it's like Jay Leno could call me. I'd be like, no, seriously, Cam, you sound a lot like him, but <laughs> The accent's a little off. I love that. I love that. So, so for you, this has just been a, is this like a dream come true for what you're doing? I know that sounds oh, yeah. kind of like airy fairy and I don't mean to make it sound that way, but hmm. well, what else would you be doing? absolutely a dream come true. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Walmart. <laughs> okay, you're the greeter, Walmart. a greeter, a greeter. Yeah. I mean, would you be working on cars? I mean, did you have any inclination that you, I mean, would you ever want to turn wrenches for a living? Cause I mean, although you don't do that, you do do that for a living. Um, as far as turning wrenches, if I did anything, I would be working on classics. <clears throat> I have an absolute aberration for new cars. Um, I don't even like anything built in the eighties mm. because they started going to fuel injection and computer controls. And we have a suburban in the yard that my wife, had to have, which is also causing me the greatest grief of any of the vehicles we own <laughs> because it's got that TBI fuel injection on it. And it is, it just doesn't like me. That's, that's the nicest way I can put it. I don't have a car in the fleet that I think doesn't like me except that suburban. So, and it's like, that's one of the newer cars. Now we've gotten new cars in the fleet, but I'm just saying, I don't like working on them. There's just too much crap in the way. Well, you know, you know when it, when a computer has to be your interface between you and the repair, the challenge is that uh, it's it's you know you open up the hood of your what's that what what year uh, Mach one do you have what is that seventy two yeah so you open up the hood of that Mach one that seventy two Mach one you open it up and it's like you can still see ground probably <laughs> through it right and not a lot because it is a <laughs> Cleveland with an air conditioner and power steering and, and a big alternator so you can actually get a whiff of ground of about that wide up by the front of the alternator and the power steering pump but yeah i mean it's it's honestly it's one of the things we talked about the other night i had some friends over and we were discussing this over a couple of beers that you know it's got if it's got spark it's got gas it's got air and it's not it's got compression it'll start and on a computer controlled vehicle yeah you have to have those things plus about 16 other hands for it to start <laughs> Uh, is there anything that is uh, that is under the hood or around your car that you wouldn't do that you'd leave to a, a different pro to take care of? Transmissions. Really? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'll install them all day long. I don't have a problem installing. We've got the black '67 that we've had on the show here a little bit. We're going to be doing a 4R70W installation on the '67 Mustang because that's a popular conversion. 
question. We did it on our Fairlane wagon because it was the hardest thing I could think you could do because of how the Fairlane uh, transmission tunnel is built. So we wanted to do the Fairlane first. And then a friend of mine says, I've got this 67 Mustang. Can you put the 470 W in it? I said, yeah, but I'm going to do videos on it because it will be so much easier than the Fairlane was. And it is. I mean, you know, engine cross members already available. There's a lot of stuff out there that you can get for them that you can't get for the Fairlane. You have to make things for the Fairlane that you can just buy off the counter from national parks for, for the Mustang. So you've been a uh, you've been a Mustang fan uh, for at least since 1994 because that's when you bought your uh, your Mach One, isn't that right? I've been a Mustang fan since 1973. I got it. Have you owned others other than the Mach One? Oh gosh, yeah. It's t- Clearly, I've had more Cougars than I've had Mustangs, but I love Mustangs. Now look, we're not here to talk about women on the show. I told you that already. <laughs> I've already got one of those. I don't I don't need a I don't need another one. Um, I have, I've had more Cougars than I have had Mustangs, but my very first car, actually my very first car was a 73 Grand Torino Sport. That got wrecked and I bought a 71 Mach 1 and that got stolen. And then in 94, I found the 72. But between all that, I had several Cougars. I had, I had a 68 Cougar XR7, I had a 69 Cougar XR7 428, I had a series of Cougar parts cars because back then, Couldn't you know, going it. back into the Wayback Machine, there wasn't a lot available for them. Right. So you had to buy parts cars to get stuff to fix the cars up. So, so, so you bought that car. You've made some. Uh, now you you did a a concourse restoration to it, and and then now you said to me in the uh, little application that you filled out, you said, "No, I'm going back and doing it again because I want to actually drive this thing." Now. I'm not driving it. I'm not. I'm not even worried about what anybody thinks at this point. Uh, it's going to stay a four-speed car because I don't plan on interstating it. So I'm not going to put uh, a different transmission in there. Uh, we've got a, it's a 351 Cleveland with a roller cam set up in it. The engine is set up basically like a Boss 351. I just have a Boss 351 that has air conditioning. Um, so that car is now old enough and has been somewhat abused <laughs> because of my choice of storage locations on it at one point that it has to be redone. And some of the things that we chose to do back in the day that I probably would never do to another car again, just simply because of what happened to that car. So what do you think about the community as, as we, uh, as we start to do an outlook for like, you know, I, I've loved watching what has happened over the last handful of years with the values of these cars. I, you know, but do you think that the community will stay, uh, are, are we growing? Are we shrinking? What's going on? Are, are, are there more car clubs now? Are there less car clubs now? Are people wanting to meet online now because of COVID and, and, uh, and instead of going to the shows, are you finding like what the resurgence of the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the cruises and everything else? What's been going on with the community in your world? Where we're at in South Carolina, it wasn't a state that was really such to embrace COVID after a bit. <laughs> One of the first states to probably do away with masks, I think. Um, so that wasn't as big a thing. And then when all that kind of broke open, probably about the end of 2001, uh, they started doing the cruise ins and I'm part of Aiken Horsepower, which is the next town over from us. That's the the club for that town. And we got involved with those guys because at that time we were living over in Aiken and we'd get a hundred cars showing up into a, a, uh, Mm. depot parking lot on a Saturday for four hours, you know, you'll have six, 700 cars, 500, maybe not six, 700, let's just say 400 cars showing up at a, at a cars and coffee here uh, at the drag strip over at Jackson dragway. Um, I, I don't see it getting any less. I see the prices doing what I saw the prices do back in 89. Mm-hmm. The prices went through the roof for a little while. And then all of a sudden everybody's stock market got better again. And then these guys started dumping the cars because it wasn't a good investment anymore. Um, And I'm one of those kind of people where I'm like, if you're going to buy a car, buy a car because you like it, not because it's a good investment. Yep. Yep. If you want a 67 Mustang hardtop, buy a 67 Mustang hardtop. You know, it's, it's your fun thing. You know, some guys play golf, some guys ride horses. I work on old cars because if I had a horse and I decided I didn't have enough money in the bank that month and I didn't feed him, the people would come from 
the county and probably put me in jail and take the horse away from me. But, uh, it's, uh, it's six bucks a gallon, the uh, cost of gas now in California with that F-250 getting about eight miles to the gallon. Oh, you're <laughs> so, doing good at eight. That's awesome. Uh, I just drove it down to motor vehicle, uh, AAA actually. They handle the, uh, the motor vehicle stuff down here. And it, it's about a 20 mile drive. I, I went through over a quarter of a tank of gas just going there and back. I'm like... Holy crap! Yeah. I can't believe I just spent thirty dollars going to motor vehicle to AAA to to uh, to have my car registered. That that's about the that's about all the driving I'm going. This will be a neighborhood car. This car this truck will not go out of the neighborhood. Yeah, eight miles. I don't envy you guys out in Cali, man, with a six dollar gallon gas. That's that's horrible. That's tough. So where do you where if you if you painted the perfect picture of where you thought you were going to go from here, where where do you hope that the channel is going to go? Your business is going to go, and what's your what's your your you know, you're pie in the sky, Mr. blue sky. Beast level. <laughs> so tell me what that looks like. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that I mean, if everybody's goal on, on YouTube should be Mr. Beast. That guy's got millions and millions of. Oh, followers. I thought you said Mr. Beach. You said Mr. Beast. No, no, I don't Mr. know who, who is that. What is What does he do? Mr. Beast. He's probably, I think he's the number one. No, he's number two behind PewDiePie as far as gross revenue on YouTube. He's like got millions and millions of subscribers. He's just, he does all kind of cool stuff. I would want to do the kind of cool stuff that he does. He does giveaways. He does all kind of things like that. And I think it would be awesome to get our channel to a point where I say, you know, we're going to go and we're going to find a dude. We're going to help him with his car this weekend. So we're flying out to, we're flying out to you, to Doug's house to help him, you know, get 13 miles of the gallon out of his F-250. <laughs> and we're just going to throw thousands of dollars of new parts on this truck. Oh my God. I want to be able to do that. kind. Of, that's what I would love to do. I would love to be able to, you know, say, Hey, you know, tell my wife, you know, Hey, let's find a car to work on in Lake Tahoe for a week. I, I try to figure out, okay, you know, especially with the 65 Mustang, which was restored once and they, and they put some good money into it. The guy right before me that, that bought it and he did a new top and he did the uh, front, the uh, disc brake conversion and he did a whole bunch of stuff and it looks really tight. But it's not exactly as I want. And I'm looking at like just doing so, even just getting a paint job for the thing. If I'm going to get a paint job for it, it's hard to get a good paint job for less than 10 grand. And it's like, you know, and a lot of that's material costs. You'll probably have six, six grand in material. It'll be mostly materials. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that a lot of folks don't realize when they talk when, and I'm, and I'm the same way, but I talked to my buddy that works at the paint shop the other day. Again, we were having one of those conversations just sitting around chit chatting. And I said, so what's the cost to paint? Of materials to paint a car right now, he said about five grand if it's not red. If it's red, you're going to be more like six, seven grand for just materials, nothing else. Because right. guess what? Everything that's in a paint job is all done with oil based products. Oh, so anything that affects your fuel costs or your oil costs, you know, if a barrel of oil is really right, high, right. your paint costs are going to go up because everything's made with petroleum products. I'm going to, I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I do any of the, <laughs> any of the, but, but when I bought. But I get some rust oil and use a roller. <laughs> That's right. Look, I tried to paint the air cleaner in the F-250 and that thing looks like poo poo right now it's like that is not <laughs> good i need to do a pay how to paint your air cleaner video with you. You, you definitely do if if you could share with 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 your community because i'm one of those guys in your community now if you could share how do you put a good fresh smooth layer of of a can and a, a spray and a, a paint in a can on anything that's in your car like i i understand that's i can't actually not a bad quick little video I, i'm glad i talked to you i will probably do something with that I, i'll get I mean, larry to come over it would be it would be good. Or I, I think did you do? I'm trying to remember. Did you do a video on how to how to create a pat? No, it wasn't you. A patina. Or you, it was somebody. Somebody did that, and it was it was like pretty cool. But I'm like, no, I'm I don't trust myself with a with a can of aerosol paint in my car. I just don't. There's it's just not going to happen. I think we could probably work on the one with the with maybe we get your air cleaner looking a little bit better. We'll work on doing a video on that. Well, the first thing you got to teach us how to do is how to remove the paint that you just put on the air cleaner. <laughs> that looks really bad. That's where it's got to that's where it's got to start because it yeah, is. I got two words for you: aircraft stripper, and not oh. stripper like the one that grabs a pole. Oh well, we already talked about cougars. We're talking about strippers now. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, is uh, uh, heroes? Tell me anybody in this industry that you that you that you look up to that you've seen that you've admired over the years and you've had a chance to shake hands with or meet. Carol Shelby. Oh yeah, I actually no met me. Carol Shelby before he passed. Uh, Donald Farr, former editor for Mustang Monthly. Mark Houlihan, who was my coworker, but Mark is such a cool dude. He now Mark's works for guy. 
Good yeah, guy. he works for Speedway Motors. He's a he's over there now, but we worked together for a lot. You're still really good friends. Um, wow, I don't know. I mean, I've met Jack Roush. I met a lot of the icons in the Ford industry. Uh, you know, so it's it's been kind of one of those things of I don't know. You know, you meet guys like Carol Shelby in my line of work. I've met Richard Petty. Richard Petty's an awesome dude. I know he's got the problem of driving Mopars, but you know, it's a while back. I'll forgive him for that. Well, it's what's funny about it is, you know, a number of the guys that you had had mentioned, you know, you, you talk to them like Donald Farr. I had a chance to have him on the show way, way in the beginning when I first started. And I've been telling Mark, I, I, I got to go back to Mark and tell him finally that, oh, yeah, let's get you on the show. Because I don't know that I can't recall if I've had him on the show. Mark, if you're listening, yes, I want you on the show. And we're going to figure out a way to, to get you on in the, in the short term. I'll tell you, uh, guys, I'll get you two guys together. I know Mark really well. He's a good friend of mine. So. No, Mark's I'll a good look. guy. Yeah, we have a lot. We've exchanged a lot through um, because of Mustang Monthly and because of another contact that we have, Dan Neve, in, 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 in uh, you know, cooperation with each other. But like a guy like Donald Farr and, and Mark, for that matter, so freaking humble. You know, yep. you wouldn't know be, that they've accomplished oh, what they've them. accomplished. Yeah, totally. Jim Smart's another one. Jim Smart's been in this hobby for a long, long time. And he's out there in Cali where you're at, um, somewhere in the L.A. area. So he's – Jim Smart was – he was the editor for Mustang Monthly. He was the editor for Mustang and Ford Magazine for a long time. He was actually our competitor for a while. And then all that stuff got pulled into a gooey ball. And Jim and I got to work together for a bit. I've known Jim for ages, super nice dude. Um, again, almost every one of these guys that are, that are in the hobby that are uh, and have been in the hobby a long time, very humble, very, very easygoing folks. Donald Farsh, probably one of the easiest going people I've ever met. Totally. Rick Schmidt. Oh Rick my Schmidt, God. National Parks Depot. I don't know yeah. if you've had him on the show yet. Yep, yep. I can probably tie, if you haven't, I can probably tie you together with Rick Schmidt in an episode because he is – one of the most knowledgeable car people I have ever met. Well, he's and he was on the show about two months ago, and and he's got an amazing collection of vehicles, oh, and it's just incredible. And again, very similar to what you're saying, just the most humble guy that you would ever you would want to meet. Super he, nice dude. You know, they're he, they're they're superstars. Uh, what's it called? A local celebrity. You know, we know them as celebrities, and then the the outside world they've never heard of them. You know, it's like that's the best part about it. When you have a guy like that that has made such a huge impact on such a small community, large larger than life for us, but yep. but but not necessarily that way. He can walk down the street and nobody's going to know him. And and that's actually that's a good kind of celebrity status to to have. I would think. I have been recognized in the local Wendy's, I will say. <laughs> well, that's good. I have never been recognized anywhere, except maybe somebody confused me with the guy in the post office as the most wanted guy. So. Freak Cam out. <laughs> don't know. Don't know about that. Oh, yeah, did yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like, those guys are looking at us. And the guy comes over and he says, you two guys are on the Auto Restaurant show, aren't you? And we we're like, yeah, and I was okay with it. And Cam got real quiet and he didn't say much. And the guy standing there chit-chatting with me for a few minutes. And, and then he walked off and Cam says, okay, I'm officially a little freaked out. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't want to be fair. He wants to just stay behind the computer. He doesn't want to have to deal with anything at all. If he wears a baseball cap a lot now and he has the sunglasses on. I swear if he could put the sunglasses on and have a fake mustache, he would probably do it. Cam's usually hiding behind an engine. <laughs> That's usually what, it's usually how I'm seeing him on the videos. I'm like, I just see Cam's head. That's all I see. I don't see that anything other is, than that. For his age, though, his knowledge base on stuff is incredible. He is very, very sharp on the show. And, I, you know, you you would think somebody that's nearly 60 is not going to be leaning on a guy that's in his mid-20s. But Cam has got such a good knowledge base, and he does a lot of study before we do the episodes. Um, it's kind of neat to have somebody in his age group that excited about working on the classic cars that he's here every weekend. It's yeah. just incredible – how good he is at what he does. He still makes mistakes every once in a while and I jib him about it, but you know, that's my job. Yeah. Well, I mean, and who doesn't, you know, who doesn't, everybody makes mistakes. And that everybody. part, again, as I started stated in the beginning of this, that's probably what attracts me to the show so much or to your channel that much, so much, because you do lead a genuine, um, you know, your stories, your storyline is great and you make the mistakes and you, and you own up to the mistakes, which is even, which is even better. It's, it's, uh, it's refreshing to have that kind of, uh, that kind of experience with you on the show. 
that was our goal from the beginning, though, to be honest about things. We had very early on, Vince and I had something happen. And I looked at him and I said, should we talk about this? Because I think we should. And he says, well, I don't know. You know, they don't do it on the TV show as much. So that's exactly why I think we should do it. You're like, yeah, I think you're right. Now that you say that, let's go ahead and talk about it. And so that kind of set us up for that mode of doing things. And we are very honest on the show, even with parts that we get in from MPD. You know, if something doesn't work, I'll let MPD know first. And I'll say, can I go ahead and talk about this as it sits? Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll show guys how to get around the problem because it's not MPD's fault. It's whoever produced that part. It's the fault of the company that made it. So, well, well, man, if you can get me around how to, how to deal with this, this freaking weather stripping, I have to, my driver's side door, I literally have to put 190 pounds worth of my effort behind getting that door shut. Take, yeah. Take those weather strips off. You're talking about a truck. Yeah, the truck. Exactly. Uh, and I, and we were done. I don't know what to tell you on that one. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have a solution. I'm, like, I'm in the same boat. It's like you take the door to go. <laughs> it's just amazing. My neighbors hate me because I closed the door like six times. It's almost as bad as when I closed the hood of that thing. Cause that is like a wong. Wong, wong, wong. Like, like I awesome. said, I've talked to NPD and I've talked to Scott. Scott House is their forward parts manager. And Scott and I have had that conversation probably three or four times. Like, dude, somebody needs to come out with the same weather strip material that they're using on the Mustangs and put it toward the trucks. Because those trucks now, the 67, the 72s, have really come into their own in the market. I mean, yeah. they're actually, you know, they're bringing serious money out there in the market. There's guys, um, Mark Gumbosi up in, I think that's how you say his name, up in Pennsylvania. He's a big build. He, he's built several trucks that have gone on the 70 thousand dollar wow range for an f100 high boy four by four well those high boys those are bringing in some serious dollars it's amazing to watch i uh, follow um chris swenson i don't know if you follow chris at all mm -hmm. he's uh, old trucks or whatever the name of his uh his instagram channel it's just amazing to see i i just same thing i just like I drool over the all of the great images. You know, he's got them out. You know, in the countryside. So there's no. Yeah, I follow no, him. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, you know, anything sixty-seven to seventy-two. I usually will follow because it, you know, it could benefit our channel. It could be somebody that doesn't know about our show. So I, I tend to follow anything. I do bumping uglies. Uh, there's a couple other. Yeah, bumping uglies. That's yeah, it. Yeah, a couple other groups that I that I follow in there. Um, Wait, and, what and years? Because, what year is that truck that you have on your driveway? 72. Okay, got it. Yeah, 72. It's got a 390 out of a 67 Mustang. All right, so you know you know from eight miles of the gallon. You know that. <laughs> I don't even think I'm getting eight. I think I'm going to be getting four. <laughs> Eight's when I'm going downhill for a while. Man, and I'm Jeff, hosting. In other words, all four barrels are shut. <laughs> That's right. Engine is off. I'm going downhill, and it's still burning. Gas. We start running eight miles of the gallon. <laughs> My gosh, brother! It is so great talking to you. It really, it really I is. I enjoy it, and uh, and we're, I really, I'm serious. I'm gonna find a time where I can put it on my schedule to see if I can come out there a couple of come days. On. What what hotel? You have like a, a super eight motel anywhere near you? Because that's about all I can afford. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's some there's a there's a holiday Holiday Inn. Oh, the no, small you, Holiday Inn. That's I don't know what that's, it's called. that's glamping. That is glamping for me. I need a I super get you a eight. Out the back. I got four acres. We'll find a spot for you. <laughs> hey, look, we could just put like a uh, like a pack on the back of the pickup truck. I lay down in there and go to sleep. Actually, I could put you up with my friend Pat's. He's the one that's been on the show a couple times. He's got the '55 Chevy that we've had on. I appreciate Pat, it. I, I will Pat use it as absolutely put you up. I'll use it as a business expense. The IRS will will cover the <laughs> cover the expense. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Just two days. That's all I need. I want to pick your brain, understand you how you've done. More, what you you've stay done. longer than that. As long as you don't make Pat mad, you can stay as long as you want. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Jeff, man, I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for being here. Man. No problem, man. I've enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Hey, Ford Mustang community. Thanks for tuning in. If you have not had a chance to go over to the show notes, that's where all the goodies are. That's where you're going to see exactly how to get to, obviously, the YouTube channel that we just talked about with Jeff Autorestamod on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can get to his website. Please, 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 if you have not yet followed us on uh, Instagram, it's at Mustang Podcast, or you can go to the mustangpodcast.com forward slash Instagram. Of course, you can still get to the Facebook group too, Classic Mustang Connection, the mustangpodcast.com forward slash Facebook to get there too. Guys, keep it safe, keep it rolling, and keep it on the road. Until next time, thanks for hanging out with us another week.